everyone, my name is Nelly Mensa and I'm the co-founder of SF Cryptocurrency Devs. Today we are here with Taj Dreija, who is currently the head researcher at the MIT Digital Currency Initiative and is also the co-writer of the Lightning Network white paper. I don't know, head researcher. Thank you for joining us today, Uh, and we have a couple of questions for you. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into uh, being a Bitcoin blockchain developer in the first place? Uh, So I was working at a university in Japan and read the Bitcoin white paper in 2011 and thought, wow, this is a really big deal, Um, really got into it. But also in the very beginning, I sort of thought I would go to jail if I worked on it. So I didn't tell other people I was interested in it because this is scary. Um, but then later, you know, as time went on, it became sort of a thing. People were talking about it, and uh, I, you know, studied more about this stuff, came to San Francisco, worked on things, and now I'm working at MIT on this technology. Awesome. So you are at the MIT Digital Currency Initiative, is mm-hmm. that right? Yep. So can you tell us a little bit more about what your day-to-day there looks like? Day-to-day. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's a little bit too much going on right now. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm teaching a class uh, this semester, which is almost over, so... Pretty soon it'll be, you know, I think next week is the last uh, week of classes. And the classes are all like online and all the homework and stuff, so if you want to look at it, you can. Awesome. Um, and I'm working on, the, you know, developing software. So the Lightning Network software, discrete log contract software, uh, write papers with other uh, awesome. PhD students, and then also uh, work with students directly. So there's a bunch of, um, it's called UROPS, undergraduate research, you know, undergraduate researchers who come to the DCI and want to learn about this stuff, and so we work with them and help them program, program things, write papers, um, and then master students and P- and other PhD students are working with us as well. So, and then also like, you know, give talks. Yeah. So so like people, you know, companies come. So it's it's the media lab at MIT, which is not yeah. just sort of acad- academic in that there are companies come in, we give talk or we have presentations. So there's some interaction with like. A little bit of interaction with the business world as well, and like also government as well. Yeah, but that's it's mostly (laughs) classes, research. Yeah, but then there's sort of you know explain something to the SEC, things like that. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. So for our audience, are there any white papers that you're writing or working on that they should be on the lookout for that they could read coming up soon? Oh, uh, well, uh, hmm. hopefully I'm 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 interested and have been looking at uh, different cryptographic accumulators for Mm -hmm. the last few months. And hopefully we'll have something interesting, and if it works, you know, sure. I don't, don't want to promise anything over, okay. you know, too soon. But yeah, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm working on now, and hopefully can publish something about that soon. Awesome. So switching gears from the mm-hmm. academic to the practical, there's been a couple of announcements coming out from Bitmain, and so mm-hmm. we wanted to pick your brain about proof of work mm-hmm. and where do you think that's headed uh, in the future? Yeah, that's that's a tricky one I, because I've been fairly wrong about it before. Like I, I don't say like this is what's going to happen, yeah. but I, my guesses have been wrong. I thought it would be pretty much done improving as of like years ago. I thought, oh, it'll it'll sort of catch up to Moore's law, right. and then the chips will just be that, and it'll become a commodity right. at maybe 2015 or 16. Uh, and it seems like that's not the case. And it seems like there's sort of new generations of chips, and there's still economies of scale to these right. things. Um, uh, the person to really ask is David Vork, and okay. I hang out with him a lot, and he awesome. he knows like everything about the sort of ASIC industry and the economics behind these things. Uh, he was he actually gave a guest lecture at my class uh, last week, and he was saying some. It, it was really interesting talking about all the chips and stuff, but also things you wouldn't have thought of like fans. He said, right. "So the fan on your device, your mining device, yeah. costs you about twenty dollars, sure. and you maybe need two of them, one on each end, and you know, but if you buy a million of them, you can maybe get it for three dollars." Right. Uh, and so, like things like that, you're like, okay, there's still even, you know, just sort of mm-hmm. manufacturing logistics. Basic economies of scale, right? Yeah. So, so it's it's tricky, and I don't. So, I understand the idea of ASIC resistance. Like, so right. the, the Ethereum proof of work. I helped write the ASIC exactly. resistance for that. Uh, you know, because I was talking to Vitalik a couple, you know, four years ago, and said, well, this, you know, I think memory latency, read latency is probably what to target, uh, and wrote a paper about that that sort of helped, you know, what they used. Yeah. But um, even there, it it's hard to make ASICs, but it sort of still has the same effect in that it sort of completely changed the GPU market. Exactly. And, I mean, and the <laughs> speed at which the innovations are coming out is mind-boggling, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think... It, so you want to be bigger... You, you want to be smaller than the pool you're in. So, like... If you say, okay, I have ASIC resistance, I'm using GPUs, I'm small enough that NVIDIA and, and AMD don't care. Right. Um, or 
I want to be, I can have ASICs, but I'm small enough that TSMC, it's a drop in the bucket. Right. But even Bitcoin is now more than a drop in the bucket for TSMC. It's like a single digit yeah. percentage, but right. it's still big. And then eventually, maybe even if you have ASIC resistance, if it gets big enough, people don't start, people don't complain about GPUs being expensive right. or, or chips being expensive. They could complain about electricity being expensive. Exactly. And people could say, well, oh, the power bills are going right. up so much because of all this mining. Exactly. That's sort of the extreme case. I don't yeah. think we'll get there. Um, but so it's, it's interesting what you're, you know, to, to just say, okay, we're going to focus on ASIC resistance. It's actually, there's a lot of things going on between like capital expenditure, right. operational expenditure, you know, different non-recurring engineering costs. Like what are you really optimizing yeah. for? Um, and I don't think it's as clear cut as ASIC resistance equals more decentralized. Right. Um, there's a lot of factors there and I, I, yeah, but then again, like I don't have a good answer, right? Cause it's like things keep happening that I'm like, yeah. huh, I didn't think that would happen. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to make a prediction about the future in that case. That's fair yeah. because you'll never know. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, but it is interesting to like get some idea of how these things are playing out and, yeah. and it's big enough now that, you know, fabrication companies are looking at it and, yeah, exactly. and the idea that maybe you could have a proof of work fab. Right. Because ASICs for proof of work are are fundamentally different than a lot of different uh, right. than a lot of things like GPUs or CPUs or DRAM. Exactly. So maybe you have like a proof of work specific fab that just makes ASICs for them. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> so then, if not proof of work, then what about proof of stake? What's your opinion on that? Proof of stake is harder in that like I sort of joke that it's the string theory of cryptocurrency right. in that like there's all sorts of research and it just never quite solves it. Like right. it feels a little whack a mole where okay, we solved this problem, but now there's this other problem. Yeah. And, um, but that said, I think it is sort of inherently more centralized and not just centralized, but it relies more on sort of social proof in that right. you need to ask other people what the correct chain is in some cases. More so than proof of work, but it's right. not like proof of work is really all that pure either, right? You still need to get the chain from someone and you Agreed. still have arguments about what the correct chain right. is. So. I think it can probably work in, in different cases, um, but it makes trade-offs that I'm not as not enthusiastic buying. about, yeah. um, but I think other people will. I think, yeah. I think in a lot of cases, you know, Bitcoin might be too, too decentralized and too secure for most of the things people are doing right. with it. Um, and so some types of proof of stake systems I think could have like a pretty good, pretty, pretty big use case. So that's an interesting point that you brought up. Uh, what do you mean by too decentralized and is there really such a thing? Uh, in that you're, you're too decentralized or su too secure, or too hard to reorg. Most of the Bitcoin transactions I've made personally, and this is, you yeah. know, I don't want to speak for everyone, right. um, they're to people I know. Sure. Or they're from people I know. So like, you know, if Luke Dash Jr. gives me a few hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin right. because I, help, you know, gave him some cash and... Sure. You know, I don't worry that he's going to try to double spend me and right. reorg and all these things. Like, yeah, it's probably okay. Um, so I, but I'm getting the same exact security as someone who's really doesn't, you know, buying something on Craigslist from right. someone they have never met before. And that, in those kind of cases, you really do want to make sure that they're not trying to double spend. So like the Goldilocks of decentralization. <laughs> yeah. So, so there may it. be use cases yeah. for things like proof of stake where, you know, it, there's some identity involved or there's some, you know, backstops involved or, you know, we, we know some more about the miner or the stakers or miners or yeah. whatever. Um, and then you could you could have a usable system, right. but I don't think it's it's not going to be the same thing, right? It doesn't yeah. give you all the same guarantees as proof of work. Yeah, that's awesome. So one last question. Sure. What excites you the most right now about even being a developer in the crypto space right now? Mm. Um, let's see. So I said to talk to there's there's a lot of new things you can come up with because even though this is supposedly like a hundred billion dollar industry or whatever market cap, it's still not that big and there's not that many people. And so you can still talk to people and people are generally fairly friendly and come up with new ideas and get published and, you know, affect how this, the outcome of all these things. Uh, so that's good. Also, this is an interesting time where it may be like a, uh, like a 2015 kind of thing where yeah. like there's a really big run up and everyone got really interested and now it's going to sort of like quieting down, just a quiet bit. down for a while. <laughs> yeah. And that's when you get work done. Yep. Uh, because like I didn't get any work done in December. You were because you're just talking to people. About well, it. everyone wants to know about it, and there's <laughs> yeah. like TV crews coming to our office, exactly. and it's like, okay, it's fun, but like you don't get anything done. Uh, but now, but what it does is like all these people get interested. Many of them will lose interest right. when the price is not going up sure. or things like that, and that's okay. 
but then you, you retain people. Some people right. like learn about it, get interested in it, and say, okay, well, fine, the price isn't going up or down or whatever I was interested in, but this is a cool technology and yeah. they're still going to work on it. And so this is the time where, okay, this is where you can get actual work done and you yeah. can start connecting with people and building new things. And growing the ecosystem as well. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So that's what I'm excited about yeah, for this really year. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you so, so much, Todd. We sure. really appreciate having you. Thanks a lot. You. All right, <laughs> Thanks. take care.